What's going on guys? This is Bram from Advancement Hockey Advising here and this week we're going to have a different style of video again like we did a couple weeks ago where we had the whole AHA team have kind of an interview style video. You know we got a ton of positive feedback from you know that video here and a bunch of you wanted us to do this kind of style of video again. So here we are we're going to have our lead advisor David DeChevy interviewing slash more like podcasting having a conversation with a player that he knows and they're just going to talk about the whole junior experience the NCAA experience and a lot more so hope you guys enjoy that video and if you do enjoy it let us know and we'll keep making more and if you do as well you know feel free to smash that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and share the video also if you have any questions or things you want to talk about throughout the video feel free to drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can so without further ado let's just dive right into the video right now What's going on guys? My name is Dave DeShavi. I'm the lead advisor at Advancement Hockey Advising. And today we're taking a different route with our, with our videos. We're going to start doing some player interviews and what we call podcasts. So we're going to be bringing on a few different guys from different leagues, levels, and, uh, and countries. And we're just going to talk to them and, and get a little taste of what their experiences were. So today I've brought on uh, my old teammate from junior, uh, Chris Politech. And uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he's gonna he's gonna talk to us about his experiences, and we're gonna see what what his whole journey was like. So, uh, so Chris, if you could just give us a little intro of who you are, um, you know what your path was like, and and how that was growing up. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Dave. So, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Chris Politek, as Dave said. Uh, I had a little bit of an interesting path growing up. Kind of bounced around to different junior spots. Uh, was pretty successful in minor. Got drafted to the OHL did kind of a little bit of everything and then decided college was the route for me. So when I was, I think like eight years old, it was AAA was the obvious decision for myself. I'm from Orangeville, Ontario. So it was commuting to the uh, Halton Hurricanes team, which was usually practicing out of Milton, sometimes Georgetown in the OMHA. Uh, played there for a couple of years, went to the GTHL, uh, was pretty successful in the GTHL. As everybody knows, very powerful league and AAA uh, was playing against kids like McDavid, um, other guys who are now NHL superstars. And then uh, minor midget year with whatever the rules are, I basically didn't get the chance to go back to the GTHL because the Halton Hurricanes wanted to keep my rights. So I didn't want to fight it, go to court like some kids did and just Played the year out there, uh, had a pretty good year for my minor midget year, but ended up having shoulder surgery near the end of the season. I had broken bones in my shoulder and I just couldn't keep playing through it anymore. It was kind of the unfortunate decision and it made my draft ranking go down, but I uh, got drafted, I think, 10th round to the Kitchener Rangers. Um, from there, had the surgery, was kind of out for like nine months. So I think it was January of the minor midget year until like basically the winter of the next season. So I had trouble making a good junior team just as like I came back from surgery and it was like the beginning of the season and I was literally trying to skate and learn how to do everything again and just get that muscle memory back. Uh, I ended up playing junior C for the Erin Shamrocks, which I don't even think is a team anymore. They folded that whole junior C league kind of moves around and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, for 16 year olds looking for junior and maybe not ready for like the junior B, junior A level, like junior C is an awesome route. I think you might get a little bit more development and exposure there. And like coaches will play you if you're good as the caliber of guys just isn't quite up to junior A. It's not that it's bad players, but you're playing against bigger men. And it really prepared me, I think, for junior. Mm -hmm. So after the draft, um, was it the, the Kitchener Rangers that decided to send you to junior C or was that a decision you made on your own? Kind of talk uh, about the draft. For me, it was a big thing is I wasn't sure I was ready to leave home yet. I wanted to stay close to home. And so this junior C team was like a 20 minute drive from home. Like I said, I was still doing rehab from the shoulder, shoulder surgery and stuff like that as well. So I just wanted to stay home, you know, go to the home high school, kind of ease my way into the junior path. So I decided junior C over uh, junior B or A. They had maybe talked to me about playing for the Kitchener Dutchman. Uh, the Kitchener Rangers, but I just didn't think I was ready for that coming out of shoulder surgery. Uh, so decided the junior C route. I'm glad I did. It was a really good opportunity. Good team. We actually had some really good players on that junior C team too. We had a bunch of guys who were either OHL draft picks, surprisingly, or had gone to OHL camps and stuff, which you don't always see in junior C, especially back then. Junior C is a lot better now, mm -hmm. I think, than it was then. But uh, it was a good development spot to start for myself. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's that's awesome. A lot of guys need it. Some of them, it, it's a it's a big uh, it's a big confidence builder, which really takes them to that next level. Um, so then, when when you and I met, we we met at camp for the for the blades. Yeah, we made the team at a main camp, and then entering your first year of junior A, you know, as a younger guy, because you were in your second eligible year of junior. Yeah, but, you know, you you had the draft status behind you. Um, how did how was that um, in that aspect? Because when I started junior, I was a little older. But for you, coming in as a younger guy, was there a little different um, different headspace that you brought to the game? Um, I think the big thing, so junior A, I was trying to decide, again, staying local because Orangeville had the junior A team there. And I was going to stay local. And that was the year that they were really not looking so hot. And I was a little bit iffy on the coach there. And then I talked to the Blades. And I believe it was Mike Daly who had kind of talked to me. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make the move. Oakville's a good spot better development, more ice time, kind of everything you needed. It was a little bit more commitment to move out there because I wasn't, you know, I was 17 years old. I'm still in high school. Switching high schools is difficult. I'm not going to lie to anybody about that, especially in Oakville. Just the culture there can sometimes be a little bit difficult to integrate to. Mm -hmm. But uh, glad I did make the jump because it was a good hockey experience. Like they developed you better in Oakville, just the practicing, the regiment of everything, the working out, stuff like that was really good for a 17-year-old because – myself I didn't choose to go the OHL route but I think for a young kid maybe looking at doing that or going to college at a young age a good junior a center will prepare you more for that college or OHL route and so for myself coming in at 17 I found it really helped my game but it also helped like my training my lifestyle a bunch of other things to kind of make me more of a you know junior hockey player and not a minor hockey player anymore mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I would say integrating into and Fortunately for me, I've been kind of a massive kid since even I was like little. I've always been, yeah. I think I was like 13 years old. I was six foot one and like 185 pounds. So I didn't have that much trouble physically adapting to junior A because I was still way bigger than everybody coming in at, I think I was like 215, 6'2 when I came to Oakville at 17, which was like big for junior A. So the play style wasn't as hard for me to adapt to just because physically I was okay and my speed was okay. It was just thinking the game. I think the biggest thing of the next level you jump to is thinking the game and being able to understand the game and move with the flow of the game better. And that's how not only can you score, be a good score, have a good shot, have good hands, but you have to be able to think the game. And I think that's one thing that kids don't understand these days as much. Mm -hmm. No, the IQ's changed a ton. You, well, you see it in the NHL with even, you know, see, you see a smaller guy who might not be superb in stature, but they, they transform the game with how they play. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. So after the blades, you know, I took off, um, you were sticking around with most of the guys, but then the, you seem to bounce around a bit. So what kind of walk us through what happened with all that? Yeah. So a uh, new coach came into Oakville and I ended up going to Milton. They traded me uh, in the OJ, I believe, I don't know if it's still the way, but they don't actually have to like let you know of any trades or whatever. They can just trade you kind of like professional teams, OHL teams. So they did tell me, they gave me the option between Mississauga Chargers and Milton. Um, Milton was really good the year before. And so I chose to go there because I thought it was going to be a better team. Unfortunately, Milton unloaded a bunch of guys that year when I got there. So the team was definitely not what I expected it to be. But again, still playing junior A high level more ice time in Milton for myself, which was something that I wanted to develop. And uh, at the beginning of the season, we had some really high caliber players, but just the owner of the team at the time had decided to sell them off to bring in a couple of other assets, assets instead and whatever else. So it was an okay year in Milton, but uh, I would say the organization at the time was just, uh, they, they came off a successful year and now they were looking to kind of refinance some of the money that they might've spent going deeper in the playoffs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, so after that, um, I decided, so played the one year in Milton and honestly, the fees of the OJHL were just getting astronomical and the team, I wasn't overly happy with there. And so I decided I'm going to go play junior B. Um, I went to Cambridge and I knew the coach there actually from minor hockey. He came in, he was awesome. Um, he was there for three or four games. New, co new coach came in, new coach and me just didn't see eye to eye on stuff. And my ice time went from like first line minutes to fourth line minutes. And a week or two later, they were like, hey, do you want to go to Guelph? Guelph was a wagon that year. And so I said, absolutely, like no brainer. Uh, I was going to University of Guelph, taking part-time classes at that time anyways. So I was like, perfect, don't have to commute to Guelph anymore. I had billets there. The uh, junior B team in Guelph actually played at the same arena as the OHL team. So, like, we had a really good facility, good dressing room. Mm -hmm. And I think that team, we had, like, 
three or four, no, four or five XOHL guys, a bunch of junior A guys came in, and it was a very old team. I think we had like 14 or 15 guys who were 19 or over on the team. So like going to that team, playing with those guys, like it was a lot of fun. You got to play with older, more mature, more skilled, like guys who really thought the game. And so it was a good opportunity for myself. And again, like just the fees of things, not having to pay these crazy fees, them putting you up with billets and that not coming out of your own pocket, stuff like that made the decision easy for myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's the fees are huge for a lot of people. But um, the one thing I want to touch on is you basically went from junior C to junior A and then to junior B. And now, yeah. while there's a discrepancy between junior C and junior A, sometimes with, especially with the, with the GoJ, um, people don't realize its quality and how it can actually advance you to, to college and, you know, the rare chance Definitely. you get to go to D1 if you're really a standout. So how is that league compared to when you were playing with Oakville and Milton? Definitely. Um, so junior B, I would say the speed isn't 100% of what junior A is. The speed's a little bit slower. It's a little bit more gritty of a style, I would say, or was when I played there. I think a lot of the leagues have changed to just more skill through and through now. But mm -hmm. junior B, you had a lot of older guys and a lot of younger guys who would maybe get sent there from the OHL teams and stuff like that. So it was a good spot for younger kids to come in and get played maybe more than they would junior A which helped them get exposure because a lot of kids who are like 16, 17 get scholarships out of junior B, not as much the older kids, but they're looking at these younger kids and seeing where they can go. And it's a good move for these 16, 17 year olds because they'll play a year or two, maybe get first line, second line minutes in junior B and they'll get a chance to develop and then maybe go out to, there was a bunch of kids who went out to BC or go out to the OHL or a couple of kids, I think went to division one at like 19. So played like two years in junior B and went right to division one. So it was good in the sense of development and you got a lot more of a chance where there just wasn't as much politics I had noticed in junior B as there was in the junior A, especially in some of the GTHL area teams. Um, so that was kind of the thing that I think swayed me on that decision and helped me just enjoy hockey more, like the lifestyle to do with hockey versus going to in Milton. We were only practicing like once or twice a week. We're in junior B, we were practicing three times a week. Everybody lived there, so you did stuff at the team all the time. It was just a lot more of a team atmosphere there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the go just def it's like a it's like a sleeper league across yeah. across the country, but people don't realize that it's a great place to develop if you're going to play. You know, if you're a draft pick for the OHL and you play there for a year, you go or you do that, then you go to the BCHL or like a top league like that. So that's uh, that's awesome. And then you got a you got a commitment to Division Three NCAA out of the out of the Goge. Yeah, so that was actually all done by myself. Um, the Junior B team, they helped me a little bit with just like talking to some teams and stuff. But I, I went home and I think it was like January of my overage season. And I said, you know what, I, I want to play college hockey in the States. I had the potential of maybe talking to some U sports teams. But I said, you know what, I want to go D3. I want to play in the States. That was something that I always wanted to do as a kid was play in the United States. D1 was a little bit off the plate at that point, as I think I would have probably had to commit to going to either like the CCHL or the BCHL as a 20 year old just to get those scholarships. Cause that's really where they're picking the 20 year olds out of. Mm -hmm. um, so I emailed a bunch of teams and it was pretty, a pretty complicated process in just like emailing everyone myself, managing all that stuff myself and then deciding, okay, first thing was finances because anybody who's looked at division three teams, there's like the biggest skew in price range. And I'm sure you know that Dave is like, oh, yeah. there's some teams that, it's no more than going to a Canadian university. And there's some teams that it's like your parents could have bought a house for what it costs to go there for four years. And yeah. so talking to some teams and you have to speak to them to see if they have deals for like out of state students and then out of um, country students as well. So that helped narrow down a couple right away. Cause there was some that were pretty good schools. I think uh, you was, is it UNH? You UNH is I think one of them. Something you like that. One, but there's a bunch of schools with there's a, something there. out that way, like the Massachusetts way, that was a, a really good school. And it was like really good hockey team, good school, all that stuff. But it was like $50,000 a year tuition alone. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't cut any deals for out of state. So I was like, there's no way I'm going out somewhere and paying that kind of money. Like, I'm not going to be able to afford this. I'm not taking out 200K in loans. And there's no way my parents are giving me 200K American to go to school. So that wiped a couple offers off the plate right away. And then I was kind of looking some other spots and just who had good teams like to develop, to play good hockey at. Um, I wanted somewhere that the school was 
reasonable. Like you're not always going to find the highest end academics in division three, just depending on where you go. Some are better than others, mm -hmm. but I wanted to find somewhere that had a fairly reasonable school reputation. And then just somewhere that I liked the coach that I was going to get the opportunity and all that kind of stuff. So I ended up picking a school in Northern Wisconsin. That was definitely a different experience. A 700 person private art school, which to some people I'd still tell them that to this day. And it blows their mind that I went to a university with 700 people where like you would see everybody, you knew everybody on campus. It was like smaller than my high school. So it was a really unique opportunity there, but it made you a lot closer with the school, with the community, with your teammates, all that stuff, because you're with all these people all the time and they support you. So I think that was a big thing for me and why I chose to go there. Yeah. The, the discrepancy between division one and division three schools is it has a lot to do with the size of them. Um, so you're not really going to get that full 50,000 person Penn state kind of experience, but the small school experience is something completely different. Definitely. And you can, and there's pros and cons, but you can find ways to enjoy it and, uh, and just enjoy your time with hockey too. Cause exactly. It's, exactly. It's and there's opportunities there that you wouldn't necessarily get at a division one as well. Like I got to play NCAA lacrosse. I hadn't played lacrosse since I was like 14 years old mm -hmm. and I walked onto the team and I was playing like almost full games which is something that you would never get at a division one school because they're recruiting these players to play lacrosse. They're not taking walk-ons, let alone playing walk-ons for full games. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to be able to walk onto a like division three NCAA team, play a different sport, learn a different sport. Be, we weren't an amazing team, but competitive, you know, it was fun. We weren't getting blown out every game, but nowhere else would I have gotten the experience to go play a different sport at college and walk onto the team and be as successful as I was in being able to play. But mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing that people overlook too is, you might not get the crazy parties that you get at these 50,000 person schools. You might not get the culture that you get at these 50,000 person schools, but you get a completely different one that's sometimes more valuable in your own development than just going to a crazy Penn state and partying every single weekend and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, teachers can know you by name. And then, like you said, you played lacrosse. I had teammates who played golf when, when I was at school too. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of great, great takeaways from that, but Definitely. at the same time, there's always a couple negatives. So for right? sure that you wish would have been a bit different uh, from going to a small school that you would like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely think, sorry to cut you off there. I definitely think um, just the school itself was small and that was one thing that is a little bit like daunting at first. Like it's weird going to, after going to university of Guelph, where it was like a 30,000 person school to this teeny little school, you're like almost caught off guard because you see everyone everywhere. And like, any of your business is everyone else's business because it's so personal there. So you really have to kind of keep your doors more closed where at a bigger school, mm -hmm. like you aren't necessarily going to see all these people you might see out every single day. So you can kind of just let yourself, I would say, be a little bit more out there at a bigger school. Um, the smaller school had very unique classes and stuff, which to some people might be awesome. Like the smaller classes to people who might not have been, uh, it just might have needed a little bit more hands on with the school or like a teacher who really is on you, reminding you, is taking more care of you. But for myself, I just found like I I'm more independent when it came to the school. So I found it sometimes a bit tedious that they wanted you there every day. You couldn't miss classes to just work on like other assignments you had at home. Stuff like that was a bit tedious. And uh, just the class sizes in general was I wouldn't say it was necessarily bad, but it was a bit crazy. Like I had a three person class which uh, it was a first time offering at the school. There was me and two other kids and sometimes the other kids wouldn't come. So it would just be me and the professor in a classroom, which like, if you're not comfortable with, you know, being 21, 22, going to college, I was okay with it. But I would imagine if I was 18 and it's just me and a professor and in a room alone and they're teaching me, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. So that's just one thing you have to be aware of is like, it, it is a different culture and you have to know going in, like I would recommend going to see these schools, going to see the classroom, maybe even talking to some professors and just getting to know that atmosphere of the school before you make any commits. Yeah, I think visiting is a huge thing. And some, some guys don't, I know guys that didn't even visit their school before they went. And like you said, going to a 700 person school, that could be a little of a shock factor if you get there and it's not what you expected. So uh, with that, how do you think the visit's like a super key thing when going to a school or, or picking a school? Like, what else do you think would be the biggest component when you're, when you're trying to pick a school that has interest in you? I would say as a hockey player, first, you are going to school. But if you're looking to continue playing hockey after school, you need to go to a school that's going to give you the best hockey opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that I wanted is, like, I was playing in the NCHA at that point, which was a very strong conference. We had Adrian College, which always has some of the best junior A players who didn't make the cut for D1. 
they had X division one players who for whether it be discipline reasons or grades or stuff like that, maybe got kicked off their division one team and were now playing there. So you had like some really, really high talent hockey players there. And it was a conference that a lot of guys, I still have buddies who are, you know, going out to Europe from this league. They're playing in uh, actually some SPHL. A couple guys played ECHL. If there was ECHL this year, there was a couple guys who actually signed contracts for my team. So it was a good spot to play good hockey. And I think that's the most important thing. And then it's figuring out if you like the school and you're going to like being there because you're not going to play good hockey and you're not going to enjoy your experience if you don't like where you're going. And you can definitely figure it out from online or maybe talking to some other people and stuff because it is difficult if you have, you know, 10 recruiting trips and you want to go to all 10, but they're all spread out across America. It's a big financial commitment, time commitment, a bunch of other things. So, I mean, I would say you can make the commitment if you don't see the place, but you have to do your research and your background stuff on where the place is, what the culture is, all that kind of stuff, because you don't want to get caught off guard when you show up and you're there for four years. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I've had, well, there's a bunch of guys from, from my, uh, my class that they left, they left either yeah. at the halfway point or at the, um, or at the end of the year. And so that, that brings me to my next question. One of the guys who left with us, he, he didn't like the ice time. And then he also didn't like the school, I guess, social aspect. So where do you kind of draw, where do you make the decision to accept, okay, my social life might be at this level, but do I value my playing time and what the coach thinks of me more than where I'm going to be, how much I'm going to be partying or how many friends, I'm For gonna sure. have, et cetera. For sure. Um, I, I would say personally, it's got to be a balance. And it depends on who you are as a person and what your goals are after hockey. Like if your goal is to play the highest level of hockey you can and you don't care what you have to do to get there, then go to where you're going to play in a good conference because you will get like significantly better. The more you practice, the more you're on the ice, the more you're actually playing in these college games, your style and play of hockey will be up immensely by doing that. But if you're kind of on the fence of you weren't ready to finish hockey yet, you wanted to keep going, you're not sure, then find a balance because you're probably not going to be happy if you're somewhere that you're not enjoying the school. And the hockey is good, but you don't really know if you want to continue pursuing hockey after. So you don't want to get cut in that crossroads because that's, I think, where a lot of guys maybe finish the college hockey or quit partway through or whatever, and they just decide, you know what, I'm done with hockey. This isn't for me. <laughs> yeah, and then they might get left with, you know, going to a school they didn't like or just picking a degree just just because exactly. they hockey. You exactly. Kind of, yeah, you got to find a way to mesh it, uh, mesh it all together. Okay. And, and, then, uh, and one other thing I want to just chime in with too is you can transfer division three schools, but your credits don't always transfer. And that's something that I don't know if kids are as aware as they should be of is like, yeah, you can transfer division three to division three, but just because you were taking all these courses at one school doesn't mean they're all going to get into the other school. So you might end up having to do an extra year if you transfer to another division three or you transfer back to Canada. What was a four year degree might be a five and a half year degree if they don't take all the credits. So that's something you have to be aware of as well as you can transfer to different schools, but it might add some time and some money on to the amount of time it takes you to actually finish the schooling part. And that adds a lot of cost too. Like that could really, yeah. you got to pay for a full other year and a half. And depending on the school, you're looking at 20 K 30 K plus. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to take that hit, but yeah, no, that's a good point in terms of the school um, tracking back to the hockey aspect of it. When you went from, so you had the junior A experience, so that's okay. When you went from junior B and jumped into college, what was the the biggest thing for you? Because for me, I'm a smaller guy. The second I took my first face off, I'm like, okay, everyone's a lot stronger than me. Yeah. I got to figure that out quick. But for you, being a bigger guy, what was that transition like? I would say uh, the big thing for me was always – and when I had the shoulder surgery, I would say it almost set me behind a year in just like my hockey IQ. And so it was getting my hockey IQ up where again, like I was a big guy The coach wanted me coming in at about 220. So I came in around that weight and I can move pretty good. So I didn't have a problem adjusting to the speed. I actually enjoyed the bigger guys because you could really go into the corners and like throw your weight around and battle. There's just thinking the speed of the game. There's a lot of things that in junior it's fast, it's whatever, but guys in college think the game a lot more thoroughly. And you learn things like I'm sure you saw where I, I don't have to like react to passes anymore. Passes are either on my stick or if they're not, it's for somebody else. Stuff like that where guys aren't missing passes anymore. A lot of stuff where the game's just more fluid and it's letting yourself play the game and know that your teammates out there should be doing what they're supposed to be doing in order to be successful. So I think it's like adjusting to that and making sure that everything you do is more crisp as well. You can't be missing passes. You can't be doing the stuff that you're expecting the other guys to do, right? So, mm. 
yeah, that's no, that's huge. And then even in practice, um, we had a we had a few years where we had maybe twenty seven to thirty one guys. Yeah. How was how was the battle like that? Because yeah, a coach can say they like you when you come in, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be playing right away. You still have to earn exactly, so exactly. So I was fortunate enough to come in as a freshman, and we this uh, Northland College carried thirty bodies, so you always had a bunch of extra guys in the rafters every night. I was fortunate enough to come in, and I think before Christmas, I played 14 out of the 16 games or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I really got the chance to come in. I wasn't necessarily playing top minutes, but I was suiting up for games. Um, so that was awesome for my own development. I would have liked to be probably playing like third line with a little bit more skilled guys because some of the other freshmen were just not quite up to that Division three speed. So they were rotating them in and out. And you have maybe line mates who aren't doing those things that you need to do to be successful at the division three level. So that was a bit frustrating, but I was just happy to be suiting up every night and have the ability to go there, sit on the bench, cheer your teammates on, go out there for some shifts, play hard hockey, stuff like that. Um, after Christmas, things changed a little bit. And for whatever reason, the coach had stopped putting the freshmen in as much. There was, I think only one freshman in consistently after Christmas out of the six or seven of us uh, mm -hmm. who were forwards. And so it was just, a bit demoralizing sitting in the stands and watching these games or maybe not getting to go on road trips with the team. And I wasn't used to that. I never got scratched for a game in junior. So just having that change in things where I was playing almost every game before Christmas to sitting out, I think five games in a row was a bit demoralizing. So it's just keeping your ego in check a bit too. And knowing like there is 30 bodies and you are going to have to fight for a spot every single day if you want to play. And even if you fight for a spot and you play amazing, you might still not get the call if other guys are performing. And it's just knowing that you have to be ready to go every single day. And even if you play your best, you might not get the sniff as a freshman, but that's just paying your dues. And that's kind of how college goes. And I'm sure you had a similar experience off the start. Mm -hmm. it, it depends. Uh, for us in college, we didn't have too many freshmen come in. So there was a lot of opportunity to play. And then you had to, we had to earn it. Like not everyone has to earn it, but you had to have that little extra thing that another freshman didn't. Or yeah. I did it. But when you had 30 guys on the team and you weren't really, you weren't really playing in the second half, how was that? Like, how'd you keep yourself in check mentally when you went to practice? I would say that was a practice. Like one, once I'm at the rink, once I'm on the ice, like that was one of those things where, and I'm sure most hockey players, it's like clear head, you know, like you're there to perform, you're there to play the feet are moving, you know, pucks on your stick. Like I'm just enjoying it. I loved practice. I've always loved practice, like just getting out on the ice. So that wasn't the hard part. I think the hardest part for me personally was the them going on road trips for a weekend and you being back at the school with like the three, four or five other kids who weren't on the road trip. You know, you're watching the games on hockey, whatever, on your TV and you're watching the guys, but just not being there, I think really took a toll on like, I want to be there. I want to contribute. I want to be part of the team and not even physically being there with the team was probably the hardest part and just mentally preparing every day for practice and knowing like you're going to have to go out there and grind for a spot if you want to get a spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a tricky thing. And I don't know, sometimes it's a case of if the coach doesn't have room to bring you on the trip or if they give the player the option, but I've always thought that it's better to bring the guys with you. Yeah, I would agree. I think for us, it was just a strictly financial thing as a 700 person university definitely didn't have the most funds compared to some of these other like, University of Wisconsin Division three teams who are a lot bigger schools with a lot more money to throw around. We were the big ticket team on campus, but even still, you know, the coach is trying to make ends meet to make sure everyone's fed and everybody gets a good experience. So sometimes that did mean, you know, leaving a couple guys behind for weekend trips. Yeah, and there's always tough decisions like that to be made. Yeah, yeah. And something that I think a junior you don't necessarily experience because you're always expected to be at the games unless there's like a legitimate excuse for you to not be there. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that going into college because I definitely didn't expect to be sitting, you know, in my dorm room by myself on a weekend when the boys are on a road trip somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it, it's difficult, but that's part of a, uh, there's always difficult points in hockey. For sure. For um, sure. It's a personal growth things too, right? It's yeah. just learning to deal with that kind of adversity. Mm -hmm. Of course. So wrapping up the last question that I had, because you, you finished your career um, based on your own personal choice because it was an injury. Yeah. But with that being said, with COVID right now and guys who are on the fence and not knowing what's happening with their career after playing junior and getting yourself to college, like do you have any advice for these guys who might have not played a year or who are a bit, um, I guess, anxious or nervous about what their next step might be? Um, I think, uh, you know, it's your last year of junior and you want to keep playing hockey. 
you need to either go to an advisor. I would recommend if you can find an advisor with good contacts, because I was fortunate enough that I had enough experiences that I knew some people in the industry who helped me be my own advisor, where we had, you know, friends in higher up places who had helped me maybe talk to some of these schools and stuff. But for kids who don't have that, find a good advisor because they're going to make your life a hundred times easier. And then you as the player can focus on just getting ready to play that college level. And if you want to keep playing hockey, like if you love the game, go for it. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Even if you don't play a lot of physical games at college, being there with your teammates, getting on the ice, practicing, you'll go back, you know, the next summer and play with the same guys you're playing with. And they'll be like, wow, you got so much better. Even if you're not playing a ton of man games, just because of how much you're on the ice, how much you're practicing, how much higher tier the practices are than even junior A. And so I think that's a big thing is just, if you want to do it, go for it. Don't let anybody hold you back and enjoy the little things while you're there because it does go by quick. And, you know, even a division three team that might not be the best, but it's an opportunity for you to play is a chance to go prove yourself. And like we said before, you can transfer. And if you plan it out a little bit and you go, okay, maybe this isn't the spot for me, but I want to go grind my first year out here, do the best I can do and maybe move to a different division three team and do that because you do have that opportunity. And there's lots of guys, I'm sure you saw it, who maybe start out on a middle bottom tier division three team, really have a great season and then move to a top tier team because these top tier teams are always looking to bring in better players because the top division three teams are, I would say, as competitive, if not better than some of the bottom division one teams. Yeah, absolutely. They are. They're, they're, they're very competitive with them. And then to add on to that, as much as everyone loves the hockey, uh, everyone's got to know you're going to school to, to get your education. Exactly. If you, exactly. If you're hockey with that, then you're, you're in a good spot. No. And I think people also don't realize how I had a bit of trouble finishing school and, you know, finding a job just because I didn't have the work experience from playing hockey. But mm -hmm. once you're in the job market, there's so many jobs that really value the sports aspect and the school aspect and a little bit of work experience that you might not have the five, six years of some of these other guys who did a hundred internships while they were in university and stuff like that. But your background and the skills you develop from the sports will put you miles ahead because you're just more rounded sometimes person and more able to adjust into some of these higher tier jobs right out of university. Mm -hmm. And that's huge too. And you hear that a lot about athletes um, moving into the job market because they have those skills of being on a team and understanding time management and working with others, et cetera. So that's, uh, oh, that's awesome. That's a fantastic uh, ending point. But uh, all right, Chris, so we just wanted to thank you for, uh, for coming on. It was awesome to chat with you again. And um, so for all those watching, thank you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Uh, thanks, guys. Take care. All right, and that is it for the interview style video here. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely let us know. You know, we want your feedback. We want your input. If you enjoyed it, we'll definitely keep making more if you let us know. You know, uh, drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com. And, you know, we'll, it'll give us more feedback that way. And if you did enjoy the video, feel free to absolutely smash that like button if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell and share the video. And we just also have to say thanks so much for watching. We hope you did enjoy it and we'll catch you on that next one.